Hello, this is a tutorial video on the Star Spangled Banner and all of the pitfalls associated with conducting this particular piece. The purpose of the video is to work on the various issues that drum majors will have, as well as directors, using the arrangement that people are most familiar with, as opposed to some of those eclectic versions out there with some interesting harmonies and such. So this is the one that's just straightforward that pretty much everyone knows with the drum roll, with the cymbal crashes and bass drum hits and all the appropriate places. So we're going to get right into it. Uh, the first thing which is critical is you have to make sure that you're making eye contact with the ensemble uh, at all times and making sure that your head is not down. And I'm going to be demonstrating this as we go along. So uh, the first thing is to make sure that the band is ready to go, that you have everyone's attention. And if it looks like most of the band is not ready, make sure that they are ready before you start. Most importantly, the snare drummer, because a snare drummer, you don't want to give the cue for the snare drum at the very beginning and not have them ready. So let's start off with that first. Okay, so chair out of way. Okay, so if I'm starting off, I'm looking at the band, making sure everybody is all set to go. Yay, they're rushing. So people, music just went flying. Okay, now they're all set to go. Okay, so you have your hands up. And then just point directly to the snare drummer. You don't need to do any type of conducting or anything. It's not necessary. When somebody's going to be starting a piece of music and they're going to be a soloist, just point directly at them. That's all you need to do. They know what to do. So just point directly at that snare drummer, and you're all good to go. Now, the next thing we're going to do involves uh, the prep. Okay, so there are different ways that we can do the prep. And the prep, of course, is establishing what the uh, pattern is going to be, what the, the, the tempo is going to be for the tune and for the ensemble to be able to lock into place because when they have a drum roll going, they don't have any sense of the beat. There are various different ways that you can do this, but I've found that there is pretty much one fail-safe way of doing it to minimize motion. I find as a conductor that the more motions we make with our arms, uh, the more confused an ensemble can get. Uh, as they, uh, popular conducting philosophy, less is more. All right, so let's look at the different things that I can do, different options that I have available to me. So I've started off by giving the conducting, the, uh, the uh, snare drummer, the cue at the very beginning. So now we're all set to go. We have our hands up. So the ensemble knows that I'm about to work with them. I have my head up. That's why I'm not looking into the camera right now. I have my head up. I'm looking straight ahead at the ensemble. And one way that you can do this would just be very, very simply. Bom, ba bom, bom, bom. In which what I did was I just took a breath in time and I put my arms out because the piece of music starts on the anacrusis, the pickup notes, da, da, which is, of course, on beat three, the dotted eighth, sixteenth note. So one option is, uh, we of course, uh, Star Spangled Banner, of course, is in a three pattern. I'm going with the boring drum major triangle pattern, which honestly works. It's effective. So you don't have to do anything crazy. You don't have to reinvent the wheel and get crazy with all different stuff like this. They just need the beat. Okay, so the idea is to establish the beat. Okay, so one thing that we can do, of course, we have the roll, and then we go out for two, and then up for three. I wouldn't recommend this. You can do it. The problem with that is if the band is not ready and you have people who don't have a good sense of the tempo, this can usually lead and often will lead to 
uh, some major issues, especially if your band is not together in a, in a tightly knit unit, but they're spread out all over the field. Uh, if they don't, they miss that one particular gesture there, you could wind up having phasing. Okay, that is, of course, the, the sounds going all over the place. So uh, a, another option that's available to you, there are two other options. One is another one that I would not recommend, but you can do, would be we have the roll. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them the beat. Two, three, one, two. Bom, ba bom, 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 whatever the speed is going to be that you've decided on at, with your ensemble. This one is good, but I also think it can be overkill because if you do this, you wind up giving a total of five prep beats. Now, it's certainly going to give them the tempo, but you may have someone who might be used to another way. They may see the two, you may. Uh, if you jerk the arms out like that real quickly, they may think that they're supposed to come in then. So that one can also be dangerous. And I, but I've seen a lot of directors do it. I've seen a lot of directors, not just drum majors, where they'll give five prep beats and then conduct everyone in. Uh, what's probably the most uh, fail safe, safe fail, fail safe, yeah, uh, way of doing it would be going down just two times. <gasps> Bom, ba bom. So we would have this. Roll. One, two. Bom, ba bom. And however you want to do it, you can actually say one, two. You can mouth it. You can say nothing with your mouth. That's a good option because now on beat two, you can breathe in, you could do one, oh, bomb, ba bomb. So you have a lot of different options available to you just with starting the piece. And you need to consider all of those different options as to what you feel most comfortable with. Okay, so the piece is going along. Let's assume that we've started it. Bomb, ba bomb, 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 bomb. Now we get to this point here and there's a cymbal crash. And I've worked with enough marching bands to know that, unfortunately, we will have that, that uh, person on cymbals uh, who sometimes may not be the strongest person in the section and may be on crash cymbals for various types of reasons. Sometimes you have really, really skilled crash cymbal players, but more often than not, I found that they're the ones that need a little bit of TLC. They need a little bit of extra care. So what would I recommend to do with those crash cymbal players. Very, very simple, okay? Uh, to make sure that they do the crash, they need, you have to remember, with with cymbals, it's not just simply just making a sound. The person who's playing the cymbals, I don't care how good they are, if they don't know when to come in, they need time to actually prep those cymbals to crash them together. So in that regard, what I would recommend you do is Make sure that you're looking directly at the cymbal player. So, bomb, ba bomb, 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 bomb. And on one, give a nice big beat. And make sure you're looking directly at the cymbal player. What might even be a really smart thing to do is before you even start, you could even talk to the cymbal player just for a moment. There's no harm in that. Just speak to the person beforehand and say, or in rehearsal, even at the performance. Well, maybe not at the performance, but certainly at a rehearsal, you could say, listen, I'm going to be looking directly at you because you're the most important thing that needs to happen here. Okay. Uh, there is, of course, the bass drum that could that comes in before that. You could be ready, and you could say that to the bass drummers and the cymbal crash as well. The bass drum is important. The cymbal crash is even more important. So we have our roll. Bomb, ba bomb, 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 boom, crash. Bomb, ba bomb, and it doesn't get you stop, of course. Boom, crash. Bum, 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 whatever you do with your band, we've just missed a boom crash there. Bum, 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 boom crash. Bum, 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 boom crash. 
Bum 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 boom crash. Bum 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 bum. Now notice what I did there. You have two different options <clears throat> because the the drum roll at that point, the drum roll is continuing all the way through, but it stops at that particular point. So you have two options there. One, you could um bum so bum bum. Um, you can cut them off on beat two, or you can just continue to conduct, and they just know that they need to stop. It's not a bad idea to do the beat two in case you have an inexperienced snare drummer, or you just want everybody to be together. Uh, I'm not sure if your band is going to have one snare drummer, or you're going to have the entire line uh, doing the roll. If everybody's doing the roll, then it might be a better idea to do a cutoff of sorts, so it would look like this. This would be the second time through um, on the, uh, the main verse. Okay. Bum ba bum. Oh, I'm, I'm horrible. Bum ba bum 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 boom crash. Bum ba bum 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 boom crash. Bum 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 boom crash. Bum 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 bum. But right into beat three then. Bum 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 ba bum. Not bum bum. Bum, bum. No hesitation. So you go right into it. So you do the cutoff. The cutoff is beat two. Bum, bum. If you chose, you want to do that. Bum, bum. Bum, 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 Bum bum crash 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 crash. Here's the first fermata that we have. What a pain this is. Actually, it's a second fermata, I should say, because we have a fermata at the beginning. So notice we have all those crashes that are there. We had this the drum roll which can come in. So uh, let's go into that fermata. And then what do we do to come out of the fermata? Bum 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 Are you gonna do that to your group? I don't know if that's the best idea. You could if you want to, it's up to you. Bum bum cut off, I recommend make that beat two. Make the cut off beat two. Don't freeze. Don, don, don. Don't do that. So uh, you can. You are just asking for potential problems, even with the best of groups. So, bum, bum. Cut off his beat two. Bum, 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 bum. Cut off his beat two again. Bum, 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 and down. Again, you have different things you could do on those fermatas. Uh, you could speak to other teachers about it. They may conflict with my views, and that's totally and completely fine. I'm just giving you one perspective. But I can tell you, having done this for over 20 years, uh, this works. And if you use these techniques, you're going to find them to be extremely helpful and extremely effective with conducting the national anthem in your particular situation. So uh, best of luck to you. If you have any questions, drop me a comment. Uh, there are certain, certainly ways you can get through to me on my Getting It Done podcast, and I'll be happy to communicate with you. So good luck to all of you. Peace.